Welcome to Hydrogeology 101 Pumping Tests. Today I'd like to talk about groundwater flow to pumping wells and about the meaning of steady state. Let's imagine that we have a well located in the center of our aquifer here and we switch on the pumps and we pump and pump and what will happen is that the pumping water levels in our well will continue to go downwards and also propagate outwards in this cone of depression. If we pump long enough, it's possible that at some stage our water levels will stabilize both inside the pumping well and also in the surrounding aquifer. When this happens, we call it steady state. The only way we can reach steady state is when the amount of water we abstract from the aquifer equals the amount of water that goes in through groundwater recharge. You cannot reach steady state if there's an imbalance between the inflows and the outflows. Let's have a look at our groundwater flow model to illustrate this with some examples. Okay, I've got a well here pumping at 6,000 cubic meters per day and you can see that it's created a nice cone of depression around itself. Our head in the pumping water cell here is just under 27 meters and we have a, a boundary here outside at 50 meters. If we look at it in section this is what it looks like so we have a constant head boundary here of 50 meters and the groundwater flows towards our well following this cone of depression and our pumping well is here in the middle and you see the bottom of our aquifer is at zero. Uh, so this was the east-west section, north-south section, so similar things. And if we look at our water balance, we're abstracting 6,000 cubic meters per day from our well and this is being balanced by or let's say replaced by water coming into our model from the north or south, east and west. And because our well is right in the middle of the model, we have equal amounts of groundwater coming in from all sides. So it's 25% from each of the four sides. Here we can see the difference between what's going in and out. It always has to balance, otherwise our model is not correct. Okay, now what this means is that all the water in our well here is balanced by water coming in from outside of our model. Let's change the recharge a little bit. I'm just going to switch off the well here and let's add one, one millimeter of recharge per day. Copy. Paste. Okay. And this is what it looks like. So basically we have an equal amount of recharge over our whole model and there's no pumping at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll develop here uh, what's called a recharge mount and it will be controlled by the constant head boundary at the outside of our model of 50 meters and it's rising up to 54 meters. The reason it's come up quite a bit is because we have a low hydraulic conductivity in the model. Let's have a look at what the water balance looks like. We have groundwater recharge of just over 15,000 cubic meters per day entering our model and of course there are no wells which are abstracting it so all of it has to leave through the four sides of our model. So the same amount of water is leaving as what is entering from recharge. The difference is zero which means our model is balanced. Okay, let's add our well back in and I have to be careful that I put it in the center of our model. Here we go. Okay, so our well is now back in the model, in the center, together with groundwater recharge. And if you remember that before we had a head of about 27 meters, this is now only 34 meters. And what it means is that our pumping water levels are not as deep as they were in the previous example. Also, what's really interesting is that 
we are not abstracting water from our constant head boundaries anymore because the amount of recharge that's coming into the model is more than what is taken out from the well. If we go to the water balance, you can see here the well is pumping at 6,000 cubic meters per day, the recharge is 15,000, so that means there is an excess recharge which is then leaving the model. So 9,000 cubic meters are leaving the model through the constant head boundaries on the outside. You'll see that the calculations are not 100% correct, that's because of the iteration, but if we iterate a few more times, it reaches zero, which is a nice thing. Let's have a look at our heads here. Um, so it is, we have a cone of depression up to here, and then there's like a, a watershed, and it goes down again to the other side. So if we had a drop of water in this location, it would flow towards the boundary of our model. And if we had one here somewhere, it would be drawn into our well on the other side. You can see it a bit better here in a 3D as well. So there is a, an elevated area between the edge of the model and our pumping well. Okay, so... Uh, that is a small illustration of what it means uh, to reach steady state. But what I'd like you to remember of today's talk is that the water leaving our model must be the same as the water coming in. We have to have a water balance in order to reach steady state. If we abstract more water from our aquifers than what is coming in, we will never reach steady state. In fact, we will dewater the aquifer until it is completely dried out. Okay, thank you for your attention. I hope you found it interesting. I'm going to follow this up by two little videos showing you how you can do some calculations in pumping wells under steady state conditions. Thank you.